One of the main differences between lenses is the maximum aperture of the particular lens. You should know by now what the aperture is and how it affects your images. If not, I strongly recommend watching chapter 1 and 2. The goal in this video is to give you the ability to decide what lens you want to buy and use for your portraits by comparing a series of portrait images. There is no right or wrong, there are just different looks and styles in photography, so it is important for you to know which look you prefer. To give you an idea of where we shot the portraits, I'll show you an overview of the scene first with a wide-angle lens. We have a model, of course, highlights to show some blur circles in the reflection of the water, and the distance from our model to the background ranges from very near in this area to far in this area. So overall, we get a good idea of how the specific lens renders the background of portraits. Don't wonder why we shot this in landscape orientation. We are shooting for video, so this definitely makes more sense. OK, let's get started with the half-length portrait and the most common focal length for portraits, 85mm. Our 85mm lens has a maximum aperture of f1.8. Now, what would be the difference between this lens and another one with f2.8, like some premium zoom lenses. Let's switch between the two a few times. f1.8, f2.8, f1.8, f2.8. And now let's compare f1.8 to f5.6, which would represent a lower priced zoom lens like the kit lenses sold with most camera bodies. Again, f1.8, f5.6, f1.8, f5.6. So what you see once again is that lower aperture numbers change the amount of blur in your background. How much blur you want depends on your personal taste, but having a lens with a larger opening gives you more flexibility to choose. And that's why we will next compare the same 85mm lens on a full length portrait. First f1.8, next f2.8 and finally f5.6. Once again, f1.8, f2.8, f5.6. Now let's remember the half-length portrait. The background at f1.8 had much more blur than we now have on the full-length portrait. That's because we reduced the distance between the camera and our model. And here is where those big apertures really shine. They still manage to separate the model from the background by blurring the background, even at full length portraits. Okay, so much for our first comparison. We will now compare different apertures and focal lengths. As a preface, let me note that a video isn't the best option for comparing detailed results. You might want to check the great comparison tool on our website, where you can select various variables for comparison, focal length, aperture, full half-body portrait, and sensor size. With this slider, you can then easily compare the chosen images. You will find the link to the page in the description of this video. Anyway, let's continue comparing different maximum apertures and focal lengths. First, we use the very popular but pricey 70-200 f2.8. We zoom all the way in and take a look at 200mm f2.8. Let's compare that again to f5.6, which is the maximum aperture of more affordable lenses within this focal range. Once again, f2.8, f5.6, f2.8, f5.6. And now let's do the same comparison for the full length portrait. First f2.8, and then f5.6. And again f2.8, f5.6. One blurs the background more than the other, and it's on you to decide which one you think works better for you. And of course your budget. Talking about budgets, that big 70-200mm f2.8 zoom lens really is way above most people's budget. So let's see what other options we have to blur the background. First, a slightly cheaper 135mm f1.8 prime lens. You see? Even though the 135mm focal length is shorter than the 200mm, the much bigger aperture allows for even more background blur. Next, 
200mm f2.8 versus 85mm f1.8. While the angle of view of course is bigger, the sheer amount of blur in the background is pretty similar. So if a blurred background is all you want, depending on the manufacturer, the 85mm f1.8 can be had for about 20-30% to of the price of the 70 to 200 To be honest, the blur difference is more evident in our half-body portrait, but still I would consider this a great option. While we are at more affordable lenses, let's now compare the 85mm lens to an even cheaper option, the 50mm f1.8, which can be bought between around 125 to 220 US dollar, depending on the manufacturer of your camera. What changes is not only the amount of blur, but also the so-called image compression. Noses get more pronounced and ears seem to look smaller. Some people don't like that look at all and don't think a 50mm lens is a good portrait lens. More flexible photographers, however, think that, for example, people with big ears look better when photographed with a 50mm rather than with an 85mm. Taking a look on these images, it's on you to decide whether you think 50mm is appropriate or not. I myself sometimes like to photograph even wider portraits, so the next lens is one of my favorites, a 35mm f1.4. However, we are getting much more expensive again. While that nose-ear effect is even bigger than with a 50mm lens, it also shows much more of the background with still a nice amount of blur. I particularly like the look of full-length portraits with this lens. It's great for weddings because it does blur the background on one hand and shows a lot of the location and atmosphere of a place on the other hand. Compare this, for example, to the image we started with where you don't see much of a background at all. You see, in photography there are no real rules. What counts is what you like best and what the people you photograph like best. The general opinion usually is that 85mm is the best focal length for portraits. You can now form your own opinion and choose a lens that fits your needs and your wallet. Before we move on, let me note something that you should already know, because you sure have watched all the videos in our course. But to remind you, beside the look, or better said, the option to blur the background, there is another big advantage of having lenses with wider openings. They obviously just let more light in and allow you to use lower ISO, decreasing noise levels dramatically and improving image quality. The location of our lens comparison had rather dim light. While at f5.6 we had to use ISO 1000, we were able to use ISO 100 at f1.8. That does make a big difference. Once again, let me refer you to the website link in the description of this video, so you can compare two lenses of your choice. We hope that will help you decide what lens you'd like to buy or use for your next portrait session. Stay tuned, we will next show you what the difference between lenses for so-called crop sensor cameras and full frame cameras is. If this video was helpful for you, please help us rank higher in YouTube searches by subscribing, leaving a comment or simply spreading the word.